Thank you to Shortform for sponsoring this video. I'm Anna, a clinical psychology doctoral intern, and let's talk about the reason 80% of marriages end. Before I actually go into what the reason is, pause this video and write in the comments what you think it is. Let's see who gets it right. So once you've done that, let's talk about it. What causes 80% of marriages to end? The California Divorce Mediation Project from the 1980s found that the main reason couples end their marriage is because they drift apart are no longer emotionally engaging with each other, are no longer expressing gratitude to each other. In other words, they're not dying by fire, but by ice. John Gottman, a relationship researcher who I've talked about ad nauseum on this channel, his research corroborated this finding. He found that at the five-year mark, the four horsemen of the apocalypse, which are four negative behaviors in relationships, tend to predict divorce. I have a video on that if you wanna check it out somewhere up here. But at 14 years, divorce is predicted by not the inclusion of negative markers, but by the absence of positive ones. This might sound surprising because when we think about relationships ending, we think about something really explosive and angry and emotional because in order for two people to get married in the first place, they have to feel really strongly about each other. They have to be really committed and passionate to decide, I wanna include the government legally into our relationship. I wanna be with this person for the rest of my life. So there must be something really explosive and fiery to the end of their marriages, right? Well, long term, the ones that break up after a long amount of time, not quite the case. Every time you forget to tell your partner thank you for something or you decide against giving them a moment of affection or spending quality time with them or engaging with them in things that are important to them, those little things add up over time. Rarely is there just one huge cause for any sort of outcome and divorce is no exception to that. Divorce is not like a tsunami coming and ravishing everything. It's like the water level going down a little bit every year until eventually you're left without water. So before I go into exactly how these dead marriages look and how to prevent things from getting to that, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. So as you may have gathered, if you are a frequent viewer of this channel, self-development and reading is really important to me. And I'm also a very busy person. I don't often have time to read throughout the week in between work and YouTube and everything else I have going on. I was recently reflecting on what are the things that helped me affect the most change in my personality in the past few years and reading self-development books has been pivotal to that. So if you're anything like me and you really like reading things, learning new things, but you don't have much time, Shortform is a great solution to that. Shortform is a website that gives summaries and key points for thousands of books. I was actually looking at the selection that they have and it's a lot of the books that I've actually covered on this channel. So I can absolutely attest to the fact that they have a great selection. They have books like Self-Compassion by Kristen Neff, How to Win Friends and Influence People, Becoming Bulletproof by Evie Pompouris, The Happiness Trap by Russ Harris, Quiet by Susan Cain, Why Does He Do That by Lundy Bancroft. So again, absolutely great selection, I would recommend. So the way that I personally use it, I go into genres and I select usually one of three genres, one of which is obviously psychology, another one is society slash culture, and a third one is relationships. A specific short form book that I read is Atomic Habits. So little known fact, I've had Atomic Habits on my bookshelf for years at this point and I just have not had the time to get to it. I'm sure it's good. I've been eager to get to it, but I just had other things on my plate and other things on my short list before it. Because I was able to collaborate with short form, I was able to actually look at the key points of Atomic Habits to see what exactly I was missing and to learn from it even if I don't have time to read the full book yet. It talks about how long-term change is just building off of small short-term changes. It talks about what goes into how to build a habit, troubleshooting for once you actually have a habit, how to keep it going, how our self-identity influences what habits we implement into our lives. So it seems like a great book and I'm really glad that I read those points. Shortform publishes new books and articles every week and it lets people vote on what actual books they want to see. It's cheaper than buying 20 books every year and certainly more efficient way to use their information. To get a five-day free trial to Shortform, click on that link in my description box or to shortform.com slash Anna. And thank you again to Shortform for sponsoring this video. So what do these dead marriages 
look like. The marriages that seem to be heading for divorce long term. There's not a lot of joy, affection, humor, friendship, intimacy. There's not passion. They're not emotionally available to each other. Things are tense. There does tend to be a lot of negative affect in the relationship but it doesn't ever escalate to something very passionate. It's just simmering under the surface. The people in these marriages tend to be in denial about the fact that there are issues in their relationship. They don't ever talk about them. They don't really acknowledge them to themselves. They feel like they don't have a right to discuss these things. They have high arousal conflicts, meaning, yeah, they do get physiologically really overwhelmed when they are in a conflict with their partner. They don't try to soothe each other. They're not the one bringing comfort to their partner. There's not a lot of positive affect not a lot of smiling or making each other laugh, just a lot of emotional disengagement. So if you're in a relationship or a marriage and you're worried about a breakup and you're worried about being one of these dead marriages, here are some things to try to mitigate this. Remember that yes, it's important to minimize the negative, the four horsemen of the apocalypse, criticizing each other, being really mean and cruel to each other, but you have to also nurture the positive things about the relationship. You have to rekindle the romance, the friendship, the intimacy, to really invest in each other, to build a connection, to have a deep conversation, to do new things together, new hobbies, explore the world, go on adventures, have more positive interactions, laugh together, you know, go to a comedy show or do something silly, just the two of you. And also, if you have kids, it's really important to not not just do things as a family, to also have one-on-one -on -one time with each other, to be able to invest in the dyad primarily, because if the dyad isn't strong, then the family is going to disintegrate. If you want what's best for your children, you need to invest in the two of you. There's this scene in the office where Pam and Jim are going through a hard time, and Pam is talking to the camera guy, I forget his name, um, you know, the one she has an emotional affair with. And she's saying that she and Jim are fighting a lot because, you know, Jim's a terrible person. And she's talking about how they've been having very frequent arguments and the camera guy tells her, well, that's okay. You know, when I divorced, it was because we stopped fighting. We didn't have the effort or the energy anymore to continue fighting, to continue emotionally engaging with each other. So I thought that was so astute of the writers of The Office to realize that, yeah, most marriages end because of emotional disengagement, not because of the fighting. Because fighting, you know, people love to fight low-key. They love to get escalated or something exciting about it. It's like this intermittent reinforcement that gets them really addicted to the other person. They want to win. Fighting can be exciting for people. Emotional disengagement, not so much. And I tried to think about this. I tried to put myself in Pam's shoes for a moment and think about what would happen if Jim stopped trying to fight. If, um, you know, when she said to him, don't go to Philly or whatever it was, stay here and let's fight about it. If he had said, no, I'm going to go to Philly. I don't want to fight with you. I think I would have felt really rejected, obviously sad, lonely, isolated, um, almost kind of empty because there's the sense of I'm alone in this. This person is not invested in the relationship. I'm the one putting into it and this is not the person that I fell in love with. The, the spark, the passion is gone. If someone doesn't even care to fight for the relationship, to soothe you, to try to work on it, then it kind of begs the question, what's the point? So of course people further disengage even more until eventually they're so far apart that the relationship just has to dissolve. I'll leave you with this. When you're in an icy relationship for a long time, I think it can probably be really easy to just get complacent and keep going with the status quo. But if you want to stay together, thawing the relationship, being able to emotionally re-engage with each other is going to be really, really important. So even if it's painful, you know, like thawing your fingers after they've been frozen on a winter day, it's super painful. It's necessary. It's a necessary pain if you want this relationship to work long term. So even if it feels vulnerable and scary, try to lean in to reconnect emotionally instead of just drifting away. Break the ice. I'll leave you with that. Have a good one.